Hey everyone, Azim here. We are starting and probably finishing chapter three, cell division and development, uh, specifically mitosis and differentiation of the embryo in this chapter. So this is the chapter three notes starting from the beginning. Um, we're gonna become, uh, we have become familiar with different types of microscopy um, and different parts of the cell. Now that we know some of the basics of the cell, we're gonna look at uh, different stages of the cell cycle and how we can differentiate cells into three different germ layers. We'll define what that means here in a minute. Just like we do how we go through a life cycle, cells go through a life cycle. Cells are living things, so they have a life cycle. Their life cycle is a little bit different than ours. There's some similarities, some differences, but here's their life cycle. Let's, let's start right here. Here's a cell. A cell will go through this cycle repeatedly. It will split sometimes, some, some more than others, but it'll split and then you got two new cells, but then this new cell can keep going through the cycle and then maybe split again and again and again until it dies. So we repeat this until death we start when a new cell forms and ends when a cell divides. That's the, cyc that's the cyclical part of it. Starting from here, all the way through here, so for most of a cell's life, we are in what's called interphase. It's a boring name, interphase. It just means in between phase, but really it's like the longest part of a cell's cycle. During interphase, a cell is just going through normal development and also preparation for this thing called mitosis. This is a special form of cell division, which we're going to talk about next. But um, if you're going to make a new cell, if your cell is going to divide, so you have one cell, here you can see our one cell. And it has one set of DNA. Remember DNA are instructions for making proteins. If you're a factory, you just need one set of instructions. But if you're gonna get ready for a, an expansion, you're gonna get another um, franchise out there, another factory out there to do the same thing as you, you wanna get that new factory prepared. So you're gonna double the amount of instructions that you have. At this point in the cell cycle, you can see double the DNA. The DNA has been replicated. That's what I mean by preparation for mitosis. We're making more of what a new cell would need. You make more DNA and you also get more organelles, but we're gonna focus on the DNA here. As far as what this looks like, this is an anatomy class after all, what this looks like under the microscope, what I'm tracing is the outline of one cell. There's other cells bordering it that are not shown. There's, the, there's a plasma membrane of the cell. You can see the nucleus right here. You can see DNA. Whoops. You can see DNA inside of the nucleus. And I can't, I mean, you see it, it's, it's stained dark. DNA stains dark. Let me just write that down. That'll be important for identifying things under the microscope in the future. DNA stains dark. We see DNA here, but it doesn't really take on a shape. It's just kind of fuzzy. What this tells us is that the DNA is it's loosely organized. Imagine uh, if your bedroom's like mine, imagine you just did laundry. I like to do laundry. I don't like to fold it and put away my clothes. So I just got piles of clean clothes around my bedroom. Um, very disorganized. Um, you know that their clothes, clothes are there, but you can't always make up one piece of clothing from the other. It's just all kind of stacked and intertwined with one another. That's what the DNA is like inside of this nucleus. During interphase, the DNA is loosely strewn about. 
So it just looks like a dark fuzzy spot. We're gonna see how this compares to different parts of mitosis. So to recap, interphase, longest phase of the cycle, either the cell is just doing its normal thing or it's preparing for mitosis. To prepare for mitosis, we double the amount of DNA. It's still gonna look like this, still with the DNA strewn about. Why do we need to undergo mitosis? When does a cell decide, let me back up. When does a cell finish interphase and then decide, hey, I think it's a good idea if I go from being one cell into two cells? Why would a cell ever want to divide into, into, into two? Several reasons, or I guess two major reasons, really. Two major reasons for mitosis are for growth. Let's say you're an early human embryo. You've started out as a single cell. That single cell needs to divide again and again and again and again and again to produce a baby. And then that baby, the cells of a baby will divide over and over and over and over to produce an adolescent will divide over and over and over to produce an adult. When we're an adult, we're pretty much done growing, but there's still some things that happen, which we'll talk about in a second, but that's what I mean by growth, going through those stages of development. You need to make more cells. That's what mitosis is for. The other thing that we can do is replace our cells. Whether we're repairing damaged kidney cells or replacing lost skin, because the top layer of our skin, the superficial layer of our skin is dead and it's constantly lost. We want mitosis of cells to replace the ones we're losing superficially. If we cut our skin, if we damage a muscle, if we damage anything on our body, we want to replace those cells. Mitosis can replace those cells. That's when a cell knows when it should divide. How does it know? There's a whole set of chemical reactions that we're not gonna get into, chemical signaling reactions. You'll learn at least a little bit of that physiology. <clears throat> Another disclaimer, mitosis does not happen in every single cell of your body. Mitosis only happens in what are called somatic cells. Uh, this word is very generic. The word soma just means body. So cells of the body, again, very generic. So what, what else are there besides somatic cells, cells of the body? In your gonads, so this is separate, in your gonads, i.e. your testes or ovaries, you have germ cells. Germ, not as in like something icky, or bacteria, germ as in to germinate, to make more of something that grows. Germ cells are what eventually form gametes. Gametes meaning your sperm or eggs. So not germ cells, not sperm or eggs. Everything else are somatic cells. Brain cells, somatic cells. Muscles, somatic cells. Kidneys, somatic cells. Everything else, somatic cells. We go through a series of steps. Here's the end of interphase, and then we have stage one of mitosis, stage two of mitosis, three, and four. Some textbooks say five, we're gonna simplify it down to four. When we're done with that last part of mitosis, we then begin interphase again. Remember, it's a cycle, except now it's interphase in two different cells. So let's go through the stages of mitosis. What is happening in these four stages and why? Well, what does it look like? How does its appearance relate to what's going on? How does the structure relate to function? The first stage of mitosis is called prophase. Prophase. Let me go back real quick. This is slide seven. Slide four. Interphase, look at the nucleus. It's a fuzzy but dark nucleus. You can't see individual DNA molecules. It's loosely strewn about. That's interphase. Back to slide seven. Look at the nucleus now. 
you can see DNA and it's clumped. It's not organized per se, but you can see condensed DNA. DNA has condensed. The term for condensed DNA, we are called chromosomes. Chromosomes. Condensed DNA are called chromosomes. That's what this illustration is showing here. Here we have loose DNA. Here we have chromosomes. That's one of the major things that happens in prophase. There's other things that happen like central formation and spindle fibers. We're not gonna get into that. What we can see with our light microscopes, we can see the chromosomes. So that's why I'm gonna emphasize that. Why are they condensing? Remember we have double the DNA right now. Uh, if you go back to slide, and this works, slide four, you can see that we've, before mitosis happened, before the start of mitosis, we've doubled the amount of DNA. We've replicated DNA, two sets of instructions. If you have two sets, you don't need two sets in one cell. You wanna have one set in one cell, one set in another. Let's say you're living with someone and you're going through a breakup. You say your stuff is intermixed with them. You wanna separate your stuff. So you start packing your stuff into boxes. My stuff in, into one box, set of one set of boxes, their stuff into another set of boxes. It's easier to move with boxes. It's easier to move with luggage. It's hard to just carry one piece of clothing at a time. You wanna condense it so it's easier to move. That's what we're doing in prophase. Prophase is condensing the DNA so it's easier to figure out whose DNA is whose. Are we gonna send it to this side or are we gonna send it to this side? That's a major thing that happens in prophase. The nucleus also goes away. That's what's going on right here. If we're gonna separate the DNA, you need to get rid of the nucleus. Now that you've condensed your DNA, well, now you wanna figure out, is it mine or is it yours? Is it gonna be cell A or is it gonna be part of cell B? They literally line up. The DNA lines up in the midline, the equator. You can see the DNA lining up. One copy on one side, one copy on the other. This is the second phase of mitosis. It's called metaphase, metaphase. The DNA is lining up. You see these dark things? This is where centrioles are found. I'm not gonna test you on that. And then there are spindles that attach to them. I'm also not gonna test you on that. But in case you're curious, the thing that's most prominent though, because it's very dark, the DNA is dark, the chromosomes are lining up in the middle. So look for that. There's no real nucleus, it's gone away, but you see the DNA chromosomes lining up in the middle at the equator. <clears throat> so we've packed up our DNA, we've condensed it, we've lined them up, we figured out who's mine and who's yours. Now we can separate them. That's the third phase. The third phase is called anaphase. We start to pull them apart. You can see this gap here. See the gap? It's not dark in the middle. You've got DNA on one side, chromosomes on one side, chromosomes on the other side, each copy getting pulled to either side. The process of pulling, again, we're not going to emphasize that in this class. There are these spindles shortening, but they're getting pulled to opposite sides. That's anaphase. Now, now that we've separated the DNA, we want to basically reverse everything we did in prophase. Prophase, we got rid of the nucleus, so we want to add the nucleus back. Prophase, we condensed the DNA, so now we want to unpack. We want to let loose the DNA. We get a new nucleus, but now there's two new nuclei, and then we decondense the DNA. We're forming two new cells. We're forming two new cells. The separation of the DNA is called telophase. Then this, this fourth phase is called telophase. The term for the physical splitting 
of the two cells when the plasma membranes pinch in. And remember, the plasma membranes are made of phospholipids. Phospholipids are very malleable. You can just pinch it, and then the phospholipids on this side will just come together. The phospholipids on this side will come together, and it's all good. Two complete intact cells, just like vesicles pinching off of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The term for this pinching in the middle to separate the cells, this process is called cytokinesis, literally means cell movement. Kinesis means movement. If you study kinesiology, you study movement. Um, the cells are moving apart, cytokinesis. Cytokinesis happens during telophase. Cytokinesis is an event that happens during telophase. Let's look at an animation of this. Oh, sorry, let me back up. As a result, the terms we use here, we started with one parent cell. One parent cell le leads to two daughter cells. Why they chose daughter instead of just child or whatever, that's what they're called, so yeah daughter cells. We have one parent cell that we started with at the end of mitosis. We now have two daughter cells that are now in interphase and they start their own cycles. You see two separate but genetically identical cells. Another word for genetically identical, maybe you've heard of the word clone. That's what a clone is, something that's genetically identical. Same DNA. That's what clone. So identical twins, are clones. They are genetically identical. Not necessarily physically identical, genetically though, same DNA. Let's say I have one liver cell. We underwent mitosis, now I have two liver cells. They do exactly the same thing. They're programmed to do the same thing, which is great. I want to detoxify toxins. I want to make things for my blood. I have two cells instead of one doing the exact same thing, more cells doing more work. Here's an animation of this process. Here's prophase happening. You can see inside of the nucleus, we get condensation of the DNA to form chromosomes. That's prophase. What also happens in prophase, and they're gonna call it prometaphase, but the, the, the nucleus goes away. So here you can see the nucleus disappears. Nucleus disappears. That's prophase. Let it run again. There's the nucleus disappearing. And we're gonna get these spindles to attach to the chromosomes. Now we get lining up for metaphase, lining up of chromosomes, and then pulling apart is anaphase. The spindles pull the chromosomes apart, one copy to one side, one copy to the other. Once we separate the DNA, we reform nu nuclei, and we get cytokinesis, the cell splitting. This all happens during telophase. Cytokinesis happens during telophase. That in a nutshell is mitosis. <clears throat> um, let's rewind a little bit. Let's go back to like I don't know, back to your own development when you first formed, when every single human first formed. When we first formed, we were a single cell. This single cell is called a zygote. The word zygo, it's a Greek stem, I believe. It means to join together. Um, a zygote is a single cell formed when an, a sperm fuses with an egg. That single zygote undergoes mitosis over and over and over and over again. 
and undergoes mitosis over and over and over again. So you need more and more cells to make a full human being. Initially, you just start with a huge sphere of cells, but and each of these cells haven't fully differentiated. They're at this point what are called stem cells. And there's different levels of stem cells, but very broadly, a stem cell is a cell that can become any type of cell. It's not yet a neuron, it's not yet a liver cell, it's not yet a kidney cell, it's not yet a skin cell. It could become any one of those. It's like a it's like a kid in college that hasn't decided what well, it could be you. <laughs> we haven't decided what you want to do yet. You, you have the potential to become anything you want to be. Um, at some point though, we start to get a little bit of specialization, a little bit of differentiation, and there's going to be some physical separation in layers. We start to get different layers in our sphere, and now there's pockets forming. At this point, it's called an embryo. These are called primary germ layers forming in our embryo. Primary because they're the first one to form germ, as in germinate means to grow. So this is still growing. These are germ layers. We're germinating. Like a, how a plant seed can germinate. This is a similar idea here. These germ layers have names. Um, pictured here in this circular structure. This is a slice of that circular structure. It's a sphere, so it's really three-dimensional. But in this two-dimensional picture, we can see layers. The blue layer is representing the ectoderm. Ecto, E-C-T-O-D-E-R-M, ectoderm. And the ectoderm, being on the outer layer, being on the superficial layer, is going to become your skin. Skin and hair, nails, your integumentary system. But you can see that a piece of that blue part also goes in a little bit. So what's this part going to be? That part will develop into your nervous system. Your eyes, nerves are part of your nervous system. So your skin and your nervous system come from the same embryonic germ layer. They both come from the ectoderm. They have that in common, despite being very different cell types. They'll eventually keep differentiating, but at this point, they're the same cell type. The innermost layer, let me back up a minute. You see a white space in our, in our embryo. This white space is literally space. There might be fluid filled, there's probably fluid filled, but there's a literal space here. There's a, there's a lumen, remember that word lumen? There's a lumen there. Lining that lumen, uh, shown there in yellow, lining that lumen are cells, and those are cells from the endoderm layer, endoderm. And so anywhere we have a lumen that is continuous with the outside of our body, like our digestive tract, our respiratory tract, our reproductive tract, so our gut, our liver, our lungs, liver too, because it's related to the digestive system. But this is what this is the endoderm. The endoderm becomes these inner lining cells, inner lining tissues. So ectoderm is skin and nervous system. Endoderm is your digestive, respiratory, reproductive, no, some, some of your reproductive system, but th those types of organs. Lastly, everything in between, which I'm shading here in red and is also kind of red colored, everything in between is aptly named mesoderm, meso for middle, mesoderm. This becomes all kinds of connective tissues, as well as muscles. Connective tissues, muscles, your heart, your blood, your kidney, muscle, skeleton, bones, um, many of those things. So three layers, ectoderm for skin and nervous system, mesoderm for skeleton, muscle, kidney, heart, blood, stuff like that. Endo endoderm for the lining of tracts.
to recap, you've gone through how a single cell can live its normal life, go through preparation for mitosis by doubling its DNA and other organelles, then go through the actual, actual stages of mitosis and produce two genetically identical cells. Only somatic cells can do this. Somatic cells can do this. If, we, if you take a look at this, our life cycle, like the whole human life cycle over here on the right side, you start with a zygote. A zygote undergoes many, many rounds of mitosis to form who we are, a full human being. That's as much as we've discussed so far. What we'll get to eventually is how within our ovaries or testes, we get a different type of cell division called meiosis to produce sperm and egg to lead to fertilization. That's a discussion for another time. But for now, it's our somatic cells that can undergo mitosis and development into those different germ layers to produce hus, different organs, and then keep uh, maintaining itself by replacing dead ones until they can't do it anymore and we die. That's a good note to end on. <laughs> Um, thank you for listening. If you have questions, as usual, please, please, please don't hesitate to ask me. Leave questions and comments in the discussion. Um, Rewatch, turn subtitles on. Let me know if there's anything that needs to be edited. I would be grateful. And yeah, have a great day. Let me know if you have questions. Take care.